Welcome back. What we'd like to do now is walk you through the process of compiling C code to generate FPGA logic. We'll look briefly at desktop simulation, multiprocess parallelism, and we'll also see how the interactive optimization tools can help us explore the pipelines that are generated for this example. The example we're looking at right now is a Mersenne Twister. It's a random number generator. It's part of the Monte Carlo simulation application that's under development for the Sparta board. And we'll be showing you that Sparta board in a few minutes and describing how the, how the bitmap generated from these tools can be downloaded and run on that Sparta board. This example consists of uh, a number of processes written in C. Each process is represented by a C language subroutine. We can see here, for example, there's a GenRand function. The GenRand function has as its I.O. a single input stream and a single output stream. The text may be a bit small to read, but the interfaces provided in Impulse C include these data types like co underscore stream that represent abstract streaming data types. These co stream interfaces are streaming interfaces that can carry data from one hardware process to another, or they may be used to carry data from a host processor to the FPGA, or uh, conversely, from the FPGA out to the host processor. Now, this example has been generated using multiple processes. We have a GenRand function that generates random numbers. We have another function further down here called temper to normal that will normalize these random numbers. Uh, Michael Krieger is here with me and he can describe uh, in brief detail the algorithm used for the Mersenne Twister and the, uh, and the normalization routine. Uh, maybe just a few comments about, uh, about how this operates starting with the uh, with the GenRand. Okay, so um, basically a GenRand takes in initialization seed and it's a, a string of uh, random numbers that you would start the, the random number generator at and then it'll, it'll, each iteration that you uh, run it, it'll produce a 32-bit random number and it'll, um, they'll shift everything over um, and then generate uh, more random numbers. So the, the twister function, the, basically the input stream here, that comes from the host processor, is that right? And then, uh, or from an initialization routine, I suppose, in the FPGA. Well, it, it, it can be configured either way. Um, in this example, it's actually from an, um, it's, it's gonna be embedded in the hardware to start out at, okay. at a certain number. So actually. there's some seed values that come into GenRand here. Yep. And then GenRand is generating random numbers on this output stream here that then feed into the uh, normalization routine. Right. So you can see in the, uh, in the source code here the use of impulse C API functions such as CoStream open, CoStream close, uh, CoStream write, we can see being used there. Those are impulse C functions provided in our API library that I mentioned earlier that provide hardware to hardware communication or hardware to software communication in an abstract platform portable way. We can also see in here the use of some optimization pragmas in the code. These particular pragmas instruct the compiler that we want this particular loop to be pipelined and we've also got some optimization pragmas, particularly these non-recursive pragmas that instruct the compiler that there are certain arrays in here uh, that we can read and write in the same clock cycle without uh, impacting pipeline performance. Uh, you can see multiple loops in this example for the, for the uh, Mersenne Twister. If we move down into the uh, temper to normal, you'll see that we take advantage of the pipelining again in the critical inner code loop for this process. Here's the use of a stream read, so that would be reading data in from the random number generator. This would be our, uh, our normalization uh, uh, code here. We've got a floating point operator right there. It's a floating point multiply. That would be a multi-cycle uh, operation. And we write the output, uh, output to an output stream that then would go to the, rest of our, uh, to the rest of our algorithm, whether it's a Monte Carlo simulation or some other algorithm needing random numbers. Uh, we can do a simulation of this uh, code in Impulse C because Impulse C is fully compatible with standard C. We can provide uh, not only the hardware description in, in the form of these subroutines but also provide a software side description. We can see that in, uh, in this other source file 
we're saying twister sw dot c this file here includes a consumer process and a uh, and other code a main function and so forth these allow us to exercise this random number generator for the purpose of desktop simulation without going into great detail about uh, how this particular test bench is run uh, I'm just going to compile the application we'll have an executable that we can run in desktop simulation and observe the behavior uh, as we would expect it to operate in the final hardware implementation we do this by clicking on the executable button in the toolbar that invokes GCC compiles the application we re resulting in a uh, an executable that's been generated uh, I want to emphasize here we have not done hardware generation at this point we've simply compiled in C so that we can verify correct behavior of the algorithm if we bring up our application monitor tool this allows us to view the parallel operation of the algorithm as it runs. You can see that uh, random numbers are being uh, generated and displayed in an output window. Uh, the block diagram here is showing us how these different uh, processes connect. So we can see this initialization routine that Michael mentioned earlier, feeding random numbers to the GenRand. GenRand then begins generating its random numbers. Those get normalized in temper to normal and they come out to the, uh, to the test process here, consumer. And that's how we can validate the correct behavior of this algorithm in a desktop simulation environment. I'll close the application monitor here. This should uh, take just a few more moments to, to finish uh, the test run here. Uh, when it finishes, we'll take a look at hardware generation, how we can generate HDL directly from this C code.